people in. Let people in. What's up, everybody? Happy Wine Wednesday. Salud. Cheers. 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 Cheers to you, cheers to us, cheers to everybody. Happy, healthy, uh, entering the fall, which is great. Thank you for joining us. Wine Wednesday here at Penoble Winery. Yes. Uh, from Roaster House, this is? Amy Osterhouse. Oh, I, I try to always get her, see what she's gonna say, Amy Osterhouse or Amy Smart. <laughs> um, we have an awesome show today because we, not only do we get to make amazing food here at the winery with amazing wine, but we have a fantastic, amazing chef joining us. And yes. that is? The one the only Marcus Samuelson, who is literally one of the best chefs yes. in the world. We're so lucky to talk to him today. Yeah, and we're we're so fortunate to have him on on our show, and we get to we sent him some Bonobo wine. So, uh, like always, he's gonna get to uh, share some wine with us, and we're gonna cook some of his food. Chef Adam, sous chef Jill, who's we're joining us. It, we're pulling it from his cook this cookbook of his. Yeah, the Red Rooster cookbook. Um, if you've never been to the Red Rooster, I suggest you go. It's in Harlem. It's fantastic. Uh, he's got a lot of cool things going on. Uh, we're going to get to talk to him all about what's happening in New York, uh, in the city, and um, around the world. Because he has so, he has a, a lot of restaurants. I met him years ago at one of his first res restaurants, which was called Aquajit, years ago. And that's when I didn't know a thing about food. And guess what? I you know a little bit. I know a little bit now about <laughs> food, which is hilarious. I, I should have learned when I first met him, but I had the pleasure of meeting him and we got to sit down and chat. Um, and uh, just like we're going to do today, and I'm super excited about it. Me too. Um, coming up, oh, uh, just to some housekeeping really quick. Um, if you want, today we're uh, we're pairing Marcus's meal with sparkling, our sparkling rose, Chardonnay Select, and our BDX. Um, if you want, you can go online right now and you can order uh, the Sparkling oh, Rosé, Chardonnay Select, and the BDX for only $85, which is kind of a steal. Um, which is a steal. Who, who set this up? Who said, I don't know. It wasn't me. What, was yeah, it you? I didn't do it. Well, with a special code. Um, the promo code is Saver Summer. Saver Summer. Just write that. It's all one word. Saver Summer. Use that promo code. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, just you there you go. Wine. Just in case you need more wine, which we all know we all do right now. Um, and that's what actually I want to talk to Marcus about. Some really cool stuff he did right in the beginning of COVID when it hit um, at his restaurant. And so he's just a really cool dude. I, I'm excited to meet him. Uh, yeah, he's just he's him. he's pretty special in what he does all uh, all over the world. Um, and then uh, also. Amy and I are headed to Atlanta pretty yes. soon because because I'm going to start shooting the second season of Stargirl. Mm -hmm. Very excited about that. Yay! COVID style. COVID style. What's so that mean? That means we'll probably be tested every three days. Mm -hmm. We'll be mm -hmm. in a bubble, yep. living in a bubble. Yep. Even more. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. My child. Uh, our child. Our child. My child. My child. No. Yeah. Our child. <laughs> what about uh, her? She's mine. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> she's yours. Well, she's going to be yours because I'm going to actually go to Northern California. Yeah, and you're going to be shooting too. Yeah, Great for Christmas the Life ABC Fight. show, uh, yeah. Great Christmas Light Fight. Um, and so we're going to be separated for a yes. little while. I'm going to live in a trailer and travel from the north to the south, which yep. is going to be fun. Yep. While you're going to be living in Atlanta. Yep. But we're still going to be doing these Zoom calls yes. uh, every Wednesday. So we're going to chime in and figure it out. Don't worry about it. We're still going to have some guests on and we're still going to do some amazing rad cooking and i hope you will join us yes. and uh you know drink some bonobo wine because that's why we're making it and you're turning uh 44 coming up this saturday 44 wow Ooh. you're not supposed to say why <laughs> because, why? why oh man miss? it's been so long you know <laughs> i was thinking the other day i've worked on tv for 20 years 20 years uh -huh. right and now i'm 44 and, but you've worked on tv for longer than i have i have since i was like 17. Yeah. So do the, the, the don't don't do the math. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, don't do the math. Uh, it's all right. Four years. Forty-four. We're in our prime right now, and we're having a lot of fun doing it. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, before we get into everything, and we do this okay. wonderful interview with Marcus, um, I hope you guys are ready. Have your mm -hmm. questions ready. Uh, we will be able to ho hopefully take one question from the viewer yes. audience. Um, let's see what Adam and sous chef Jill are cooking up today. Hello, everybody. Cheers. 
It's yours. They let me in the kitchen tonight. Gary. No, it's me, right? Lucky me. I get, I get some hands in the kitchen, which is great. So our first course, we are making uh, Marcus's cornbread, which is delicious and really, a, a, I don't want to say fail-safe, but a fail-safe recipe. Um, and we're pairing that with his liver butter. Got some chicken liver butter. Yep. Chicken liver butter and a nice little side romaine salad. We're just we just shredded up some nice crispy romaine. And one of the things about Marcus's cookbook that I really enjoy is the utilization of spent items. Um, he really delves into things that uh, people just don't think about using, like cornbread crumbs into a vinaigrette and let me tell you it's delicious it really makes sense and it's pretty amazing how it all comes together so I, I had a great time digging through this cookbook and really just seeing a different chef's perspective on how to utilize food and it was uh, a lot of fun really so and we're, we're excited about this uh, about this menu. Yeah, and we're pairing this with our sparkling rosé. I think this is the first time. Obviously, we've had this on the happy hour a lot, but I think this is the first time we're featuring it with a dish. Um, and so the reason why we kind of chose we chose the sparkling rosé. We're also using the BDX tonight as well. So these are two pretty big wines that we have. So we wanted to make sure that we found flavors and um, and styles of cooking that really stood up to it. So um, with the sparkling rosé, the chicken liver butter in particular is what is really going to pair nicely. Kind of that richness that you get from obviously the chicken liver butter, um, the bubbles and the acidity and crispness within the sparkling rosé really cuts into that and kind of balances it out nicely. It does, and it really complements too with the minerally characteristics of a liver. Um, the sparkling rosé really, it, it brings out some of those mineral characteristics that might be a little bit harder to discern, but it's really a lovely dish. So thank you, Chef. Yeah, right. Cool. So uh, we're going to be starting that out because again, here at Bonobo, we actually do a little dinner, which we started a couple weeks ago, where 10 people, maybe 12, 12 uh, VIPs get to hang out and try some of these wonderful meals from these chefs. I was going to say celebrity, but they're like real chefs, even though they also have TV shows too, like Marcus does and Kat Cora does and, you know, all the, everybody and everybody. <laughs> um, so, um, and, and so we're actually uh, sharing the love, sharing the love, this yeah. amazing food. And um, are we going to Todd first? I think so. Let's go to Todd real quick before we talk to Marcus. Todd is with the lovely crew hanging out right now. Hey guys, how we doing? These guys are excited back here. Um, look at them all fired up. Look at these guys, huh? <laughs> As you can see, everyone's getting ready to go. Has some great, uh, great wine that they're drinking. They're um, patiently waiting for this food that you guys are showing that everyone's so excited about and uh, just to pair those flavors together. But we've all got everyone ready. We've uh, set this up a little bit differently than last week. And just so we can show that we can do some different things. So send it back to you guys, but these guys are fired up. You can just feel the excitement back here. Listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, thanks, Todd. Oh, the Todd, older brother. I love the older brother. I know, I know. He's so sweet. He He's is. so He's sweet. Great. Um, yeah, so we have one more, our harvest dinner that's coming up. Uh, I think we have September 30th. September 30th, by the way. It's my favorite anniversary. Just FYI, if you want to know, um, <laughs> which we have, I think, like eight spots left uh, for it. So if you want to go online, I think we have eight spots uh, it's left. It's an extra, extra, extra special yeah. last dinner here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now, uh, without further ado, yes. let's get the interview started with the one and only, again, such a cool, such an amazing person, such a fantastic, world renowned. Oh my chef. God, Marcus. Hi. Marcus Hi. Anderson, what's up? How are you guys? How are you guys? How are you? You know what I, I wanted to say? What a fun way to get people together. You know, I've been so impressed and everybody doing different, different communities, but what a great way to have these dinners and chef is doing a great job and they, they're doing a great job in the kitchen, but what a fun way. Thank you for hosting like that. It's really great. Oh. 
Well, exactly. You know, I think like you, you know, when we started Bonobo here about 10 years ago, Bonobo mm -hmm. Winery, and, and um, you know, never feeling, never knowing what was around the corner, never realizing that, um, you know, COVID would ever be a thing. And so it's like, we, we had to get creative in things that we wanted to do, not realizing what the outcome was. And now we get to, you know, hang out and talk with people like you, who, by the way, I haven't seen in a really long time. And do you remember that first time we did meet? Um, I, I think so. I was thinking about that. We, we met when we launched our shows. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's, yeah. You're correct. And uh, yeah, anyway, I, you know, it's, you were super kind. You came up and we talked and, you know, I just think it's, you say 10 years and, you know, I started Red Rooster after that really great recession, 2008. So we both had the same <laughs> right. idea of entrepreneurship around the same time. So, you sure. know, but here we are 10 years later and we- Here we are. It. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you have such, uh, you know, I was going through a lot of stuff. You have, by the way, your book, called The Rise, which looks amazing. Is yeah, coming we're out. so excited to read it. Yeah, and that's coming out and uh, end of October, is that right? End of October, very excited about it, yes. Yeah, and um, we took a few things from your Red Rooster book, and that's obviously what we're cooking today. But there's so many things to talk about because you have so many things that you do. You have a, a zillion restaurants, and you have a zillion TV shows. Yeah. You're not only in front of the camera, but you're also behind the camera executive producer. Yeah and you have books. What is your favorite thing to do? I mean, I feel like, I and, and you love music too, which I yeah. kind of want to talk to you about that a but little I, too. I would say part of the, my, my favorite thing is, my grandmother introduced me to food and people really, and I've seen the world through those things. So I love cooking and I love people. And I've been fortunate enough to, since I was a young teenager, do the same thing but not quite the same thing every day. As long as I touch food and I can work with people, I'm happy. And that's why I think COVID have been so hard for us that are in hospitality because we do it for the love of people. You know what I mean? Like you guys can do a lot of different things, but if you're not having that in human interaction, it's very hard to get up every day and get excited. So I would say the love for people and, 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 and food and I, I, I'm, I'm blessed. I've been able to travel the world and see the world through food. Um, and uh, yeah, I still feel like it's, it's the greatest hobby I've ever walked into, you know? Right. Uh -huh. I, I mean, and you can see that, that passion in pretty much everything you do. And I feel like, um, you know, the, the way you approach food has been, it's, it's a unique in style. And I think your, your brand is very well represented, meaning your restaurants are really represented by who you are. Cause you can yeah. see that the fabric of who you are, you're a hard worker, you're diligent at what you do, you're, you're passionate and you're, you're great at what you and do. And you're so worldly. Like, I feel yeah. like you incorporate every bit of the world into your cooking. I, I might be the first sweetie opium that you ever met, Amy. I might be the first <laughs> one, but you know, I'm not going to hold it against you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a valuable asset, you know, it is. Well. who knew, right? Who knew that yeah. that would be a valuable asset, exactly. Yeah. No, but we, hey, we all get thrown very unique, different cards. You know, yeah. I think about, I go back, I take my little boy and my wife and I, we go back to Ethiopia every year and maybe not this year, but like normally we go back and I go back to the hut where I came from and it's the size of two restaurants tables. And wow. it both gives me, it gives me goosebumps, but it also gives me inspiration. And if I could have overcome tuberculosis and somehow some random luck and, and great people, because there was a nurse at that hospital that made sure that we got adopted, uh, that's how I got to Sweden. So I think if I can, and I was fortunate enough to come to America in my early 20s. And, um, you know, it's, I've, been, I've been riding that wave and you create your own luck, but you also have to be lucky and, and, and staying, staying healthy. So I love, you know, I love being here. And it's times during like 9-11 and COVID where you really get tested, right? You really, it, it's really a test for all of us. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But when we come through this on the other end, it's also something as, I think you become even more patriotic in a way, you know? Right. right. It definitely it, brings people more <clears throat> together. Yes. In crisis, like mm -hmm. people need each other more, you know, we need our community more than we, we than ever. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you see that. And speaking of uh, community, you, um, I read in the eater that you, I mean, you were really one of the first when COVID hit, you were, you were literally passing out food. Isn't that right? Yeah. No, we've been doing it for a long time, but you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's being part of something. Like I was lucky enough to uh, be a good friend with Jose Andres and I called Jose yeah. and World Central Kitchen up that first two days and, and what can we do? And I think that having a partner like Jose and World Central Kitchen, they had everything. They knew how to social distance serve when we didn't. They had mm -hmm. gloves. Remember those early days when nobody had gloves, nobody had mask, nobody yeah. knew what six feet apart was? He, their group came like FEMA. It's like, guys, we got this. Do you have right. a new team? And I'm like, my team would love to work. So through World Center Kitchen, we, we've been serving about 250,000 meals. And then we've also added it in Newark, where we did the same thing to Newark Working Kitchen. And Michael B. Jordan um, is from Newark, and he helped us out together with Audible. So we've been able to serve about the same amount of numbers in Newark and in Harlem. And it, 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 it was needed, but it also saved us. You know, I needed that routine because you guys were talking about your careers and how long you've been at it. But it's also luxury to have a routine, right? Even if sometimes that routine is an unknown, I needed to leave my house, put the gloves on, put the mask on and go out there. So it was equally helpful for myself and my team. Right. What were you making in that massive quantities? I, you know, it's funny because a guest is a guest. And as a chef, chef could say that in the kitchen. You just want an opinion. So after the first week when we went into this routine, we had the new regulars. The new regulars were people, maybe they were homeless, maybe they just lost right. their job, but their opinion matters. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> right. so the next day they were like, like in a week into this, like chef, you know, the chicken dish yesterday was much better. What happened? <laughs> we got a fruit, we got apple, but you know, by <laughs> Amy, how come we don't get a, a, a apple vibe from you? So it was like this real back and forth, this real push and pull until we got yeah. it together. By April, we had it down. We knew what people liked. We, it was a VIP line, social distance. So, you know, you have to take it seriously, you know? <laughs> they got picky on you. Of yeah. course. This is Harlem. This is New York City. What do you think? I know. It is the food capital pretty much. So yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, it, it was great. Sorry. Hey, yeah. Um, speaking of Red Rooster, um, you know, I love the fact that, you know, you've sort of invigorated that like spirit of music and food. And I'm a huge music buff. Yeah. And I know what do you I just want to know, what are you listening to right now? Oh my what? God. I it's it's that's such a good question. I've gone back. I actually uh now I've been listening a lot to Prince Sign of the Times. I'm going back to Prince 80s music. Mm. Um, there was a time where Prince did four albums and a movie in two years. And wow. it was also the reason why I went back to it because it was a similar time in that mid 80s period where, you know, we just learned about HIV, which sounds mm -hmm. pretty much not the same, but it's like we have this fear, you know, with COVID and everything. So it's uncertain. He also, you know, was also you know, the country was very divided. And I just, it's just been, I've been going back and just listening to the Sign of the Time album, the Parade album, and just, you know, I, I go back to Prince anytime. I just, I just love him. Yeah, I think Prince, yeah, Prince is definitely yeah. to go back to. I mean, yeah. he's, he's just, uh, some of the stuff he's done, he did, he did was just, it was, it was um, world, I mean, it still resonates today. And that's obviously the sign of a, of a true artist, you know, something yeah. that can still, when you put it on, it makes you move. And, and now with all the great podcasts, you can, you know, someone like me, when I go out and run in the morning, I can mm -hmm. really nerd down, you know, now I can go yeah. into like all these great podcasts where you can really be like, oh my God, this happened in the studio and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Because you get to hear backstories too. I love like now, because I think on social media, it's like all these DJs are going out and from their, their homes, they are literally just sort of you know, playing their music yeah. and you can find it on social media. Like you could never find that before, Absolutely. you know? And I, I go back to D nice. Cause I feel like he was kind of the, one of the first people who was doing it. Was. And, and when he, he just got a huge following where, you know, he didn't really have before because, you know, he's, you know, more of the old school and, yeah. and, um, and he just, and he really sort of set that trend. 
very well deserving too because everybody's trying to follow Dean Ice now. Yeah. You know, when you go back to Dean Ice, he started in the 80s. And for someone like Dean Ice, that is the nicest guy you can ever meet. Yeah. So for him to have that, you know, that major conversation with the country right now and being uh -huh. that popular, when people want that quick hit, yeah, I mean, he's been only been doing it for 35 years. <laughs> right. Yeah, completely. So, completely. You know, I, I, I thought it was funny, and now, he's a, big deal. And now he's a big deal. But I, I thought it was funny. It's like Quest Love wasn't doing it, and then Dean yeah. Ice, you know, Quest Love now started doing it. You know, but D was like, you know, he's like, oh, he was kind of the original, but he really was the original. He was, he was absolutely. Yeah. You know. um, well, um, look, I, I think um, you were going back to. We'll go back to some food now. Um, you said that when you went when you went to Sweden. I know you. You said your grandma, Helga, is that right? Mm -hmm. Helga, yes. Yeah, and she was, she was, was she like your real inspiration to get you for where you are today? Well, first of all, my grandmother, Helga, would freak out. First of all, to be on Facebook Live, but be mentioned in a winery. That's like an environment that's far from where <laughs> she came from. So thank you for <laughs> right. shout out to Helga. No, but, and it, it's funny. We all have dealt with COVID in our own way. And I, I'm just going to walk back a little bit. Those early days in March, before people even delivered food, I, to get to Whole food to buy food for my family, it was an hour and a half wait. And in those lines, when I stood in the lines, you know, I was thinking about my grandparents that constantly talked to us as kids about the Second World War when the ransom books was out and you could only get X amount of flour, X amount of potatoes, and you have to wait in line. And you know, I'm a little kid, you know, listening to like Yo MTV raps or whatever, trying to like try my new sneaker, van sneakers on or whatever I was doing. And I never thought that this would ever happen to me. And here I was 35 years later, standing online, had to make decisions. What am I gonna get in the store? And I was, you know, we were linked through that, you know, it, it's, 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 I can never get over that, that whole idea. Mm -hmm. So, so Helga is always on my mind and she has, she was definitely my, the work ethic. And she was also one of the first uh, proclaimed supporters of child labor, because if you enter her house, you were working. <laughs> <laughs> she was, she was like, I was working at 11. So you working at 11, it could be uh, yeah. herring. <laughs> you know, go out and get your lingam berries or go and pick apples for me. You, we were, we were grinding with her, but we, you know, I love it. So much. <laughs> That's amazing. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Our dad yeah. was, a, our dad was a father. So he was very, a father? Well, no, our, our father, our father, my brother, he was, he's um, a farmer. He's a farmer. And <laughs> yeah. so he was very much, uh, very, he's similar you know, to that. You know. Um, he, well, yeah, he, you're, there's no sitting down watching a movie or anything. It was, no. you were working all the time. Um, were you ever able so, to get your dad? Was like, was it at a moment where you like got him, or was he always like he gave you another job to do? Or were you? Oh no, like, no, you never. Like we, he always gave us more jobs. And I thought like the one time when my older brother, the quick funny story, we always had to pick up like you know stuff around the house, like on yeah. the lawn, and like sticks and leaves and stuff. And and he was like, no, go outside, pick it up. And we'd have to fill these boxes and we'd weigh them. Um, just to see how much money we would get. And then my older brother started putting rocks in them so <laughs> that they would be a little heavier, but like little itty bitty rocks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I come in at like seven or eight and I'm like, well, I'm gonna put a bunch of rocks in. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> my brother wasn't too happy because my dad found out. We <laughs> of course. I have to, I have to, yeah. share, I have to share that. I have to give you one more funny Helga story. So, yeah. you know, like living in Sweden, you know, America was, you know, it was, pop culture. It was the place that we got ideas from, whether it was Levi's jeans or Converse or Vans or whatever. And, you know, if I'm going to the store with my grandmother, she went to the store with us and you got over to the Levi's section. I was like, yes, I'm going to get a pair of Levi's. No, 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 no. She walked over there to check it out. And then she went to the garment store and buy <laughs> denim. And, make <laughs> oh, Levi's. and every time I was like, damn. But then, <laughs> this, is, this is why I love like, speaking. What happened? <laughs> yes, but this is why I love awesome. sneakers. There was this moment where I was like 12 and I'm like, I'm not going, I'm done with these like almost Levi's and always have to hide my jeans. And then when sneakers became a big thing, it was yeah. the first time when I had victory my grandmother. She looked at those Converse and she's like, mm. 
And she would just, it was just a grunt. She gave up. She couldn't make converse. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's like the only time I won. <laughs> Uh, that's great. Yep. Yes. Those small victories. Small victories. Small victories. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, tell, me, tell me about the winery. When did you start and how did you start it? What yeah, so we, we started this about 10 years ago with my brother in, in Traverse City. I, I think, were you up here in Traverse Trav City? Uh, of course. In, in, you, were you up here for, I think you were up here years ago, I think. Yeah, Can't about remember. 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I know we didn't see each other then, but I remember I remember hearing that you were up here yeah. for something. So Traverse City, you know, great fruit bearing region, and and um, it's I, the cherry capital of the world. Yes, absolutely. it is. Absolutely, yeah. Still a very large exporter of cherries, and and you know, at one point people started making wine, um, which was uh, in the seventies, really, um, and uh, they started switching a lot of the cherry trees to the uh, the vineyards and whatnot, and. And we sort of followed suit because we worked on a lot of the cherry farms when we were little kids and uh, mm -hmm. we didn't want to do cherries anymore. So yeah, yeah, we yeah, switched, yeah. This, switched it over to this and we got lucky enough to, you know, sort of uh, <laughs> to make this happen. Were you able to, did you, were you able to get some of the wine? Uh, I'm drinking the wine wine right now and it's fantastic. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing what the Swedes would be very proud of. It's the box. So I'm drinking that and it's amazing. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, we have the, um, you know, look, we, we wanted to make sure that we were pairing our, you know, Bordeaux blend and our sparkling rosé with your yes. food, because we felt like those were sort of, you know, our, our, our Bordeaux blend, you know, it's got, it's a little bigger and, mm -hmm. and our sparkling is something that like, you know, we just started, I should say, we just, uh, this is our first vintage of sparkling this year at our winery, but our winemaker has been making sparkling for a very, very long time. So we got really lucky with him right. um, to be, you know, to, to, to really sort of master the sparkling within this area. And, um, and I love that you're having it because what I love seeing is how people respond to wine here in Michigan, because I feel like yeah. a lot of the people that I've met over time, chefs or psalms, they 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 don't know about the wine from Michigan and how it can compete. And look, there's wine being made in a lot of different regions, and some of them are really good, like uh, the region up here. And and Wonderful. and you know, it's different because. But it's, people don't usually think about drinking wine from mm, Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> no, but but that's it's. I think entrepreneurship and working with people is all about finding a niche and finding a unique need, and then broadcast and communicate that and you know, getting an audience for that. And that takes different thinkers and it takes, you know, a lot of different things. So that's awesome. awesome. I have an embarrassing story from Traverse City that I have to, can I share an embarrassing story? <laughs> yeah, yes. go ahead. I so I get there and it's the most beautiful place and it was around this, you know, around the lake and everybody was so nice to me. So they asked, the host asked me, what do you want to do? I'm like, you know, I really love tennis and I don't get a chance to play. So they set me up with a prodigy. So I I get to meet the best 11 year old in the country happened to come from Travis City. Yeah, this kid is tiny. So his racket is like, we have the same kind of like racket and his parents were watching. He was the nicest kid. And here I am arguing with an 11 year old whether the ball was out or not. You know, <laughs> he's such a good player. So, you know, when you start playing you don't think about this a kid that hits the ball back is 11 and I'm like, you know, 29 or 30 at the time, whatever, you know, whatever I have. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that's no. amazing. The ball was not out. What are you talking about? And I finally was like, you know what? Take a step back. Yep. <laughs> wow. So that Did was Travis City. Yes. Yep. Uh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I, love, I love that you'll always remember that. Well, when you come back here to Traverse City, um, you know, we'll pair you with the 12 year old. How's that? The, right. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, a uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, younger. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Flora, our daughter. Yeah, our she's, daughter, she's. By the time you come back, she'll just. Yeah. At. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah. Listen, we have a couple questions. Yeah. You don't mind, and we're. If, if, are you good on time? Good on time. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Um, I just want to you know be cognizant of that because we don't. We only have a little time left, yeah. but we're going to go to our chef, our in-house chef first, if that's yeah. all right. And then Perfect. we're going to do one question from the. Uh, the VIPs in the back. Perfect. All right. So Adam, Chef Adam. How are you doing, Chef? What's up, man? Great job, man. The liver butter looks great. The cornbread, amazing. Good job, man. Hey, thank you. I, I, 
I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous uh, speaking with you. Uh, you're, you're a hero to me as far as food Thank is you. concerned. Um, it's great talking with you. Great um, talking to you, man. You're just for great. a moment. So yes. uh, I guess the question um, I had for you, um, I know for me, when I got into cooking and, um, you know, all the avenues of it, one of those is pairing wine. Yeah. And I guess um, that might have been a little bit intimidating at first sure. for me. And I know that for other people, that's, uh, it's just like a mind bending thing on sure. how you go about pairing. And I know what works for me, I guess I, I was wondering what works for you or if there's yeah. any words of wisdom sure. you can give to our viewers on how to make it a little more approachable. Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, you're doing great. And I think that the most important thing is that you think about delicious. What's delicious to you is how you want to cook, is how you want to set the table, and it's what, what you want to pour. It is, you know, there's a lot of people grew up, not a lot of people, but some people that grew up in Sonoma, or grew up in Napa, or grew up in, you know, Mendoza, or these great wine regions, they grew up around the grapes. So their understanding of the terroir is very, very different than maybe a chef that grew up in a, cl a colder climate. So I grew up our beverage in Sweden was either vodka or beer. So wine was very esoteric and foreign. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn it. So I just think, first of all, things that grows together. So everything that you guys can grow in your garden would work with, with, the, food as, with the food and the beverage as well. Secondly, don't ever second guess what's delicious to you. Because if you like it and you cook with passion, that's what's going to happen to, the, to your guests as well. And then study nerd down like um passion can get you far but then it's also good to really nerd down so when i travel um i try to read up on wine articles or beverage articles because you you want to be in the know so it's also fun to push yourself you know so i think all of those different things are avenues that you should look into and then eventually when we get out of this covid um travel get out. If you haven't been to California yet, go, you know, not now, but like whenever that is the right time, uh, you know, you, you know, save up your money and, and, and either drive or get on that plane and go out and do it because nothing beats being there. Because once you get a wine from that part of the world and you've been there, you're going to be even more passionate about it. Sure. Thank you, chef. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Keep cooking. Um, Great job. So I, I, and I, and I love that when you say travel, because travel is something that, you know, yeah. it, it really gets people in the culture of, of different areas where they may otherwise not, you know, really even understood mm -hmm. why people do sort of what they do. And, you know, your, one of your shows, no passport required. Awesome show on PBS. There's so many, different places that you've been to and uh, that you've seen gives a lot of explanation yeah. of different cultures and different foods. It is. Um, we're gonna do one more question and that is from our gallery. Uh, my brother Todd is there. Todd? I'm here. Hey, we're ready. We got Gina over here. She's gonna ask the question. How are so you, here Todd? we go. How are you, Todd? Hey, Marcus. Oh my Hi. gosh, thank you so much for joining us here in Michigan. And I do culinary demonstrations here in Michigan. Wonderful. Everything since March has been closed down. I see that you are going to do a virtual event at the New York City Wine and Food Fest in October, which I'm so excited about. What can we expect? Well, I think, uh, first of all, um, keep cooking and you, you know, you just like this, keep cooking maybe on a Facebook or, uh, or live or an IG live, however you connect with the audience. So yeah, I mean, I will cook from my new cookbook, The Rise, which really celebrate, you know, black excellence in American cooking. And we're celebrating about 40 African-Americans that have contributed so much to American food, um, all from Southern food, but also other uh, avenues of African-American cooking. So I'm really excited about that. And yeah, I mean, New York Food and Wine was one of these things that we, people travel to come to. This year, we just got to do it virtually instead. And I, I think it's however communities comes together. I think this is this is a great way of you guys connected tonight through this. I, I just think it's great to start to see that people are doing stuff. We're doing it in a safe way, of course. We're doing it social distance, but we have we people want to be with people. It's just that simple, you know. 
I agree. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, all right, Marcus, we have kind of okay, exhausted nice. a lot of your time and we appreciate you so much. Our kitchen smells amazing because of your recipe. So good, enjoy the lamb, you're, enjoy you're, the you're... dinner. And thank you for having me. And hopefully we can, I can come up to the winery, cook there instead in real time at one point. All right. Oh, uh, that would be wonderful. I and hope we do sometime. Yeah. We're going to look you up when we come to New York. All right. right. I'm going to get the right. I'm going to get the rise and have him make some of the dishes. There yes. you go. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, Cheers, you buddy. thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Take care. Cheers. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Mm. All right, Marcus Samuelson, what a guy. Oh He's so goodness. cool. I love him. He's, He's just so cool. Uh, men uh, want to be him. Women love him. He's just got like a lot of cool stuff happening. This Sorry, guy is... women want to be him, men love him. Well, we can do both ways. Certainly. We can do both, both ways, whatever. <laughs> Everybody loves him. I mean, it, true. he's got so much going on and he's such a passionate dude about food. And that's what, you know, we um, strive uh, to do ourselves here at Bonobo Winery. It's, yes. it's, the, it's the pairing of the wine, the food, um, you know, as social as we can be with people uh, during COVID right now. But at the, uh, you know, the end of the day, that's why we started this is to really, you know, get people into, you know, the, the experience of smells and taste and, and I don't think there's anybody else who does it as, as well as Marcus does. I mean, as far as all of these things, whether it's the texture, the color, the, you know, if you get to one of his restaurants, he has the, the, the sound, the music stuff that, that are playing. He does it and he takes you to a, a, an entirely different experience. So if you ever have a chance to get to one of his restaurants, um, you know, make sure right. you- uh, All your senses are just like blossoming and open and- yeah. Um, yeah, right it's, now our smell like it smells so. I wish we could we could transport the smell. Well, let's here. show what we're what we got going on so here. Delicious in here right now. Uh, Jill. Yes. What's going on? What's happening? So we have our main course going on right now that we're plating. So this is uh, Chef Margaret Samuelson's lamb, or as he called it, cordero with grits. Uh, Chef Adam put a little spin of his own on the grits. He added some cheese to it because he doesn't love a cheesy grit. Um, along with a chili vinaigrette that goes on top, which almost tastes a little, a little bit like a romesco sauce. So if you've ever had a romesco sauce, um, <laughs> it's a little bit more of like a, it has like almost a creamy texture to it because like the vinegar and all of the kind of the roasted vegetables that go into it kind of whip up into this really beautiful kind of frothy, delicious vinaigrette that's going on. Um, so we're pairing this with our BDX here. So again, like we said, so BDX are fuller, fullest body wine that we have. Um, lamb goes amazing with full body red wines, especially those from the Bordeaux uh, area. Even though we're not in Bordeaux, this is our Bordeaux style blend. Um, so we oven roasted the lamb and then um, I tasted it before and it was really good, but apparently it wasn't done because chef threw it back in the oven to crisp up. So it was super nice and crispy, which again goes really nicely with the, like, the heaviness um, and the smokiness that you get from the, the full body from the BDX. And it just adds a, another layer of complexity as far as uh, textures are concerned. So, the, yeah, I'll say it again. The thing I love is just all the different components that come together and the way that he really uh, builds depth of flavor. It's really beautiful. The other thing that Chef Adam did a little bit differently that Marcus didn't do in the cookbook is he used... Um, the lamb jus, so that was left over. How are we using this, Chef? Did you use so I took the, the lamb jus and I had a bit of leftover roasted uh, red pepper and onion. I threw in some herbs to it, uh, a little bit of cilantro, which I thought made sense. Um, and then I took the, the lamb jus and reduced that down until it was a nice sauce consistency and mixed those together. So. Uh, Depth of flavor just really coming through here. Really nice. Okay. Um, well, um, that yeah. looks terrific. And I don't know that if Amy and I, for some reason, we don't get to taste much anymore. So hopefully we get to. Lie. We have VIPs in the back, guys. Oh, really VIPs are in the back, not up front. <laughs> yeah. Listen, the two recipes that we're making tonight are from this cookbook. And again, he's got a newer cookbook coming out the end of October. Of the rise, and I'm really excited to, to read that and use some of the yes. recipes. It's about black cooks in America and the soul of American food. Um, should we, oh my dun, gosh, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. 
we just get a little special yeah. delicious meal. You can just tell everyone how delicious wow, it is. I know. How did that work out? How did they move um, to the front of the line? I don't know. Somehow, wow, we get thank forks you. and everything. All right, so we're going to taste this so real thank quick. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't mind. <laughs> I love the grits in grits. here. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is so good. You know, and this is the beauty of Marcus's food is like there's so much texture, smell, taste, obviously. Um, Here's the recipe. Wow. All right, that is delicious. Um, pair that with the BDX Todd. I'll, I'll have yes. some of that if you don't mind. Um, when you're on TV, you can kind of get people to like, you know, serve you, which is really good. Sometimes even your brother or your sibling uh, works really well. Doesn't it? Is this like the last Zoom of technically summer? Because well, this, I feel like yeah. fall. This is fall. This, this is kind of our last Zoom of summer because we, we are having our harvest yeah, dinner here harvest dinner, right? on the 30th. Mm -hmm. If you want to join us, you can look, uh, go to bonobowinery.com. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Um, and then if you want what we had tonight, uh, for a limited time, savor summer, you can get the Sparkling Rosé, Chardonnay Select, and BDX, only uh, 85 bucks plus uh, shipping, which is 10 bucks. Um, that's a really sweet deal. And yes, my fingers, I have paint on them because um, I'm making You're some- staining doors today. making some doors today because <laughs> my brother's got me- Nice know, job, Carter. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I got a birthday, you know. Uh, cheers to everybody. Cheers Thank to you everyone. so much for joining us. Thank you, Marcus Samuelson, yes. for being with us today. Everybody out there, stay Bye. safe, stay warm. Winter stay is coming. Up. Take care. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, Todd. <laughs> <Cheers, Mark. laughs> <laughs>